So today's video we are diving into beginner's guide to craft. What we're going to do with this video is really set the scene for you as a beginner. I'm going to show some of the basic features, so show some of the special features that you might be looking at and then also dive into much more detailed updates and who I best recommend this for. So it's really suited for those who have heard about craft, want to know what's special about it and make a decision on whether it's for you. Before we begin, we do have a course that we just released about craft on Tool Academy. It's free and you can get access to the whole thing, which is pretty uh, handy if you do want to learn it. There's also a pretty neat uh, like 15 plus minute build with me session if you want to really see how craft can be sort of put through its paces if you do want to check that out. Now primarily craft is quoting as amazing documents and it's really weird because its design is very similar to Google Docs blended with Notion. It is a gorgeous looking design and what's really nice about the application is it's natively built for Mac OS and iOS so it works well on the iPad and iPhone. A lot of people are saying that compared to Notion's development, this application feels much more stable as a good sort of experience. Now, you can pretty much do what you would with most document applications on this. It's got a range of text formatting, so you can pretty much crack straight into writing a document. And there are some collaboration abilities if you do wanna share that between team members. I would say the special features come when it comes to sharing a document, especially because they intend for you to share documents because of the way that you can organize stuff. So for example, if you create a document and you've got a range of information on the page, you can turn things into two different types of element on the page. A page, so you're basically turning it into a wiki, you know, be able to go into different pages and be able to find stuff, a little bit how notebooks work, but pages. And you can also turn pages into cards. So this is probably the most special feature it's available on free and pro, but pro gives you more additional customization. So let me explain this really simply. You go and you create an element into a card uh, and what it does, it comes up this styling screen. You can basically, this is the pro version, you can basically turn this into a really attractive looking thumbnail. You're basically making a thumbnail for your page. But what's really nice is you can customize not just the background, the colors, and also you can customize the text and how large it appears on your screen. You can obviously do loads of page layout changes, much like you would inside of Notion, like changing the dynamic or width pages. However, the card ability really does help some of your cards stand out, whether that's making a personal wiki page for yourself or making your document that you want to share externally even more attractive. So grouping and cards, I would say a really special feature just because it adds that level of customization that you don't get inside of applications like Notion. And for some people, presentation of these sort of document documents or maybe even uh, just seeing them every single day might be something that tips them over the edge. The other ability that you can do inside of this application, although not as advanced as apps like Rome Obsidian, is bi-directional linking. Now, I was fairly impressed at this application, mainly because it does have that and allows you to connect up different pages and documents together. Um, so you can not just do the sort of titles to different pages, and obviously that creates a link, but you can also do referencing blocks as well which is particularly helpful even for students when they're studying or for somebody when they're building a page for themselves and want to be able to bring in data from the start. In the course, we actually show you how you can create mini sort of widgets out of this, but as you can imagine, a pretty neat little feature. Although I would say it's probably better than the bi-directional linking inside of Notion. That's sort of like page linking. This is, I'd say, uh, sort of medium level, more understandable. Obviously, I'm going to talk about the price and a few updates here. And then we'll talk about who it's best recommended for. The price uh, is $44.99 per year. And it does give you access to the unlimited attachments and unlimited um, use. The free plan gives you a thousand blocks, which is pretty much standard across new applications. Obviously Notion moved to a different plan more recently. Updates wise, they are adding updates pretty frequently and they're making it much more accessible for personal users. Most recently, they actually added an attachments update, which I was fairly impressed at. Actually the ability to add your own PDFs, docxs, and any universal file attachment you want obviously making sure that in the free plan you do actually have a limitation to that but in the pro plan i don't think you do have or at least it's maybe like 10 gigabytes which isn't too bad but having that sort of feature actually 
brings in, for example, more competitiveness to, say, traditional note takers like Evernote, which is fairly impressive. Now, aside from that, the development seems really good, and the fact that it's such a well-built application is attracting a lot of people. But the question is, who is this best recommended for? Now, Craft, I would say, is most suitable for people who are going to be using this as a personal wiki. Now, if you're looking for more team situations, things like that, or you rely heavily on things like databases inside of Notion, I would probably rule out Craft just because it doesn't even have some table abilities. I'm sure they'll add them in the future, but in terms of databases, you can't really beat Notion databases when it comes to a direct comparison. So in terms of that sort of level, I would say it's probably best for personal document um, taking. You could even turn this into your own organization system for planning things like tasks, taking notes, even doing a journal entries every single day. I would say this is probably 80% of the use of Notion minus databases. And it does come with a really reliable, fast application on iOS and Mac. So that's always good news. The other thing I'd say as well is it works offline pretty well. And the fact that you can add attachments like this, I think actually feels a little bit more intuitive than Notion when it comes to being able to access them offline. So all in all, I'm actually impressed by Craft. I think it's a great application. It's just very weird how it fits in the market right now because it's quite tricky to place. However, I would say I'm probably gonna do a bigger deep dive into Craft versus Notion, but I would say this is a really powerful documents application Then actually gives you Notion-like abilities in a very simple documents tool. But at the same time, you definitely could potentially use it as a personal wiki. So I'd say it's probably a personal wiki docs app, very hard to place it, but it's definitely something that you should check out if you're in that sort of, in the market for that sort of application. Now, as I said, there's a free course to Craft, Craft Made Simple, and that might give you a bit of insight into actually how it works in a bit more detail. We do touch on pretty much most of the basic and intermediate abilities. So I'd recommend checking that out because that might be the sort of difference between you understanding it or you getting started with it. It is free to get started, so that is good news. But if you have any questions or you'd like to reach out, feel free to drop me a message on Twitter or on email or in the comments below. Anyway, guys, a big thank you. Hopefully this was a useful beginner's guide to craft and I'll talk to you all very soon. Cheerio.